Do you find yourself absolutely confused on what men really want? Are you frustrated after years of trying your hardest to get men to finally chase after you only to have him pay all of his attention on some other girl who isn't even paying him any mind? On today's show, we'll discuss five real things you can actually do that will have the men going crazy for you. And for once, have them chasing after you like a hungry hyena. Very first one, I want you to ignore him like dead serious. I know you're going to say ignore him. Okay, this sounds like really toxic information. Are you trying to teach us to be toxic? Just wait a second. I'll explain what I mean because you can do two things at once. You can ignore him while also not being a toxic person. I'm referring to ignoring his calls, his texts, his uh, DMs. His sending you uh, TikTok uh, videos, his sending you Instagram reels, him sending you Snapchats. No, 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 no. You ignore all of that. Why? Because none of that benefits you. Men are going to be the most attracted to the girls who are not speaking to them. What I mean by that is the more you are speaking to the man, the less attractive you become because the more attainable you become. And I know you finally want to be the one getting treated like the dream girl. But the reality of it is... The dream girl is a dream girl because she's unattainable. Because we love, as men, doing all the work of trying to convince her to want to be with us, want to speak to us, want to be around us, want to be our girl. And while guys might say, I don't. I don't like girls that uh, play hard to get. That's uh, that's stupid. That's uh, that's toxic. I don't have time for that. I want you to just tell me exactly how you feel and just blurt it all out and just lay it right on there on the table. See, 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 that's the trick. When they don't want to have to do the deciphering because they know it can be a very addictive process trying to figure out, does she like me? Does she want me? How does she feel about me, right? And men don't want to fall into that trap with you. They actually want you to make it easy for him and easy for him to not be so attached and invested in you. And if you lay all your cards out on the table, tell him exactly how you feel, it will make it very easy for him to not be confused and not have to uh, feel so invested in you and trying to figure you out. But the thing about it is, even though he might say he wants that, the sad part for you is you become the most uninteresting girl to him. And then he ends up chasing after the girl who embodies everything that he told you he didn't want. You're going to squeeze the life out of any form of communication he has with you that is not taking you out on a date and seeing you in real life. Why? Because that is the hardest thing to do, okay, for the guys, and because it requires in being intentional, it requires scheduling, it's going to be very painful for him, but the process of it being very painful for him is what's going to make him go crazy for you. Notice that this is titled, How to Make Him Go Crazy crazy for you, not how to ease his anxiety and make him feel really good and never think about you and just call you like super chill and super fun. Now that we've established that, you're going to ignore him, number one. I want to hop right into number two because it perfectly coincides with number one. That's going to give him a lot of anxiety. But here's the thing. That's good. Here's the thing. When you really like a guy and when you're really interested in a guy, you're going to be naturally invested in the success of that relationship. There's nothing wrong with that. However, in the process of you being invested in a guy and wanting this relationship to work, what's going to happen is the times in which he feels some anxiety towards you or the relationship, maybe he feels like you don't like him or you're uninterested in him, or maybe you're just too busy for him. When he voices that and you're also invested in him, what's going to happen is you're going to really want to jump out and be like, no, but I really like you. No, but I'm really interested in you. No, but I want you so badly. No, but I, I'll, uh, oh, is it that you think I'm not texting you because I don't like you? No, I'm going to text you now a million times so that you know how much I do like you, right? And you actually kind of become a little bit anxious that him expressing his anxiety is a communication that if you don't change or fix that thing, then he'll become uninterested in you. What he's actually describing to you is the discomfort that he feels of being increasingly emotionally invested in you to the point where now he can't stop thinking about you. Now he can't like actually turn his brain 
brain off as it relates to the relationship and you and what you want. All he's thinking about is your needs, what you want, what he's doing, right? And he just keeps replaying you over and over in his mind. That becomes agitating and frustrating to the men. So they express to you that anxiety, hoping that you will ease that anxiety. That's where the mistake comes in. A man will never be able to go crazy for you if you're constantly easing his anxiety. I know it sounds super toxic. I know it sounds super wrong, but I need you to understand the process of really loving someone, being obsessed with them, going crazy for them is going to consist of some of what we can describe as negative emotions as well. And it's okay for him to have a little bit of, an, or a lot of bit of anxiety as it relates to you. All that means is his investment emotionally in you is continuing to increase, and that's a good thing. Because when his investment in you emotionally is very low, I guarantee you, he won't be acting right. He won't be treating you the right way. He won't be treating you with respect. He won't be talking to you uh, with respect. And his mind and his focus and energy will be on every other thing except for you. But I guarantee you when his anxiety is high as it relates to you in the relationship and whether you want him and want to be with him, you'll get a response that is very different. He'll be paying a lot of attention to you, paying a lot of attention to your needs, paying a lot of attention to your wants and desires and how he can serve you the best. Okay, what I actually want you to do, if you want the man to go crazy for you, what I want you to do instead is I want you to acknowledge the fact that you don't have time for him to be texting and all this good stuff. I want you to let him know the reasons for that, but then I want you to continue doing it. Yeah. You're on a villain arc. Number three, this is going to sound very strange, but I want you to be vague in the way that you talk about yourself and your desires. You don't want to be trauma dumping on these men, all your insecurities, because it's going to make you very mundane, very regular, very uninteresting. When you point out all of your insecurities in yourself, in your life, and all that good stuff, because all that's going to do is help him realize the things about you that are not as good, not as desirable, not as amazing. Now, I know you're probably saying to yourself, but I just got to be true to myself. I, I got to be honest about who I am and what I feel and what I think. What's wrong with me sharing my insecurities? If he can't accept me for my insecurities, then that man's not even for me in the first place. Okay, take a chill pill. Understand why, why you're here. You're not here to be in a relationship with every man. You're here to be in a relationship with the right man. That also means you can't trust every man with all these intricate, uh, deep, dark secrets and details about yourself and how you feel about yourself. There's nothing wrong with sharing your insecurities to with your boyfriend or your husband, but it's very different uh, from sharing your insecurities with a stranger or a guy you're still getting to know and you don't know yet. The example I want to give you is, let's say me and you are best friends. We're besties. We actually are besties. So let's imagine we went out for dinner um, as besties and we're eating um, spaghetti bolognese and I'm sitting there and I'm like oh my gosh you will not believe this I've been trying for the past five days to pop this ginormous pimple on my forehead can you see how big this pimple is like is it that bad or like it's it's it, I feel like it's so disgusting and pussy and nasty and you're eating your your spaghetti and you're sitting there thinking to yourself I honestly didn't even notice that pimple until you pointed it out but now that you pointed it out it is kind of a big pimple and now as i'm talking the rest of the time we're hanging out you're actually noticing the pimple not because you really noticed it the first time or when we sat down but more because i pointed it out and now that i pointed it out as an insecurity it became more clear to you and it entered your radar and now you can't unsee it it's kind of the same idea as when you trauma dump on people and tell them all about your insecurities and the and the, and the ways that your life is not good and all that good stuff you kind of stop being like this Cinderella dream like figure that he can chase after and fall in love with breathe in your fart air and all that good stuff and you just kind of become a regular person with regular everyday problems and a regular everyday look and you're just normal you're just chill and I know you're thinking, well, but that's actually me. I don't want him to fall in love with his idea of me. That's I, I, wanna, I want him to fall in love with the actual me. Yes, that, that sounds great. But if you want the guys to, to chase after you and pursue you and go crazy for you, 
They have to be able to project onto you. For yourself, when you were dating guys, the guys you like the most, do you think you projected on them the most? And do you think you projecting onto them made you be more interested in them? Number four, this is hyper important. I need you to pay attention. Look in my eyes. Look in my soul. Okay. I'm looking in your soul. Look directly in my soul. Okay. Soul's connected. I want you to never, ever, ever validate that man there's still ways plenty of ways to validate men though one of those ways is by giving him squirtle that's that giving him access to your squirtle is the number one way to validate him because after you give him access to your squirtle what can you really say you're an a-hole okay i got access to your squirtle what does it matter you're 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 uh so uh rude Okay, I got access to your Squirtle. Oh, you you mistreat me and you disrespect me. Okay, I got access to your Squirtle, right? And everything to him is like, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what your opinion is. Because I know in the end, I got access to your Squirtle. So if your opinion of me was really that low, I would have never got that deep of access to you. That is validation. It's the ultimate version of validation for the guys. Now, the reason I say that is not just to tell you, oh, don't give him access to your Squirtle. That's pretty straightforward. What I'm also trying to tell you is even in smaller ways, don't validate him. Do not ease his anxiety. Okay, I told you guys this before. Don't validate him either. Don't tell him how much you like him and want to spend time with him and want to be with him. And, and you just can't stop thinking about spending every waking moment of your entire life with him. And you can't wait to wake up next to him. And you want to sleep over for three months straight. And you want to live at his house. And you want to brush your teeth with his toothbrush because you want his, his, uh, his bacteria to be in your mouth too. Because what that will tell him subconsciously is I'm in a position of power. Because she likes me so much, he's going to know if I were to walk away from this relationship, if I were to not want to be with her, she's going to be in a lot of pain because she likes me a lot. She wants me a lot. She wants to be with me a lot. And if she's in a lot of pain, then I, uh, if I were to walk away from the situation, then I know I kind of have some leeway to act how I want to act. I kind of have some leeway to do what I want to do. I kind of have some leeway that if I make a mistake and I just apologize for it, she'll probably forgive me because, you know, she wants to be with me that badly. It's having high standards. If you're thinking about what the dream girl is embodying, what her mindset will be, how she'll act, how she'll carry herself, she is going to have very high standards. Why? Because she's the dream girl. If she's the dream girl, there's a lot of men that want her. There's a lot of men that want to chase after her. There's a lot of men that want to sniff her butthole and be around her. And so if that's the case, she's going to have very high standards as it relates to the people she will even accept into her life. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, don't the men go crazy for the girls with low standards too? The men give those girls attention. It's very different types of attention. But when you have high standards, it actually puts you in a position where you once again embody someone who is very unattainable and unavailable. And if you're unattainable and unavailable, then you're a lot like a dream girl. If you're available and you're attainable, then you're nothing like the dream girl. And the dream girl is the type of girl he's going to be going crazy for. The dream girl is the type of girl he's going to be chasing after like a hungry hyena. Very important to show him also that you have high standards. Not enough for him to just see it and hope that he believes it because you tell him that. You're challenging him to actually have to put his best foot forward in order to get access to you. And when a man is really interested in you, that challenge, if he's really interested in you, will actually force him to put his best foot forward. And that challenge will feel a lot like for him, like he's on the hunt for you. Like he really wants to be with you. And if he wants to be with you, he's going to have to work for you. Men go crazy the for women that they have to work for. That's where the high standards come into play. Men don't go crazy for girls they don't have to work for, unfortunately. They might give them some of their time just to take advantage of them and utilize them for their own pleasure. But they're not going crazy for those girls. Why would they? What's there to grow crazy about? Your standards are low. You'll accept anyone into your life. You don't care what I do. You don't care how I do it. You don't care if I apologize or I don't. I can say whatever I want, however I want. I can talk to you how I want. I can treat you how I want. Nothing matters.